Hi everyone, and welcome to Shavlik Protect. My name is Joe Andert, and I'm a technical communicator with Shavlik. In this video, I will show you how to scan and patch your ESXi hypervisors using the virtual inventory feature. There's a lot to talk about with this feature, so let's get started. The virtual inventory feature is used to manage and track the vCenter servers and the ESXi hypervisors that are used in your organization. With this feature, you can add your vCenter servers and hypervisors to Shavlik Protect. You can view basic configuration information about the vCenter servers and the hypervisors. You can perform a scan of both your managed and unmanaged hypervisors. You can view the security bulletins that have been installed on your hypervisors. And you can also view the security bulletins that are missing. You can deploy any missing security bulletins to the hypervisors. You can power on and off the virtual machines that reside on your hypervisors. And finally, you can add your virtual machines and virtual machine templates to a new or existing machine group. The vCenter servers and the hypervisors that are currently defined to Shavlik Protect can be viewed by selecting the virtual inventory list in the navigation pane. The vCenter servers list shows the vCenter servers you are using and the hypervisors that they are managing. In this case, I currently have one vCenter server that is managing 10 hypervisors. The ESXi hypervisors list shows the hypervisors that are not being managed by a vCenter server. In this example, I currently do not have any unmanaged hypervisors. One way to add a vCenter server or a hypervisor is to use the new menu. You'll need to specify either the full path name or the IP address of the vCenter server or hypervisor that you want to add. And, of course, you'll need to specify credentials that can be used to access the server or hypervisor. For this example, let's add an unmanaged hypervisor. So, here is the unmanaged hypervisor that I just added to Shavlik Protect. It is important to note that the servers and hypervisors contained in the virtual inventory list will also be available on the hosted virtual machines tab of your existing and future machine groups. For example, if I were to add a new machine group, you can see that the same servers and hypervisors will already be populated on the Hosted Virtual Machines tab and are available for selection. The reverse is also true. Any vCenter server or hypervisor that you add using this tab will also be available in the Virtual Inventory list. This enables you to add an item once to Shavlik Protect and use it in multiple places. Let's return to the virtual inventory list so I can show you the different actions you can perform on your vCenter servers and hypervisors. For example, if you select a vCenter server, information about it is displayed in the right-hand pane. The header area provides basic configuration information about the selected vCenter server. The top pane displays the ESXi hypervisors that are being managed by the vCenter server. The bottom pane contains two tabs. The VMs Templates tab displays information about the virtual machines and virtual machine templates that are contained on the selected hypervisors. You can power the virtual machines and templates on and off, and you can add them to a machine group. The Bulletins tab shows the status of the security bulletins that have been issued for the selected hypervisors. If the hypervisors have not been previously scanned, the Bulletins tab will be empty, as is the case here. Let's initiate a scan of an individual hypervisor and see what happens. The Operations Monitor is used to track the status of the steps in the hypervisor scan.
With the scan now complete, I'll simply perform a refresh to see the new information. The Bulletins tab is now displaying the status of the security bulletins that have been issued for the hypervisor I just scanned. One way to filter the contents of the tab is to use the Only Show Latest checkbox. When it is enabled, as it is now, the program will display only those bulletins that have not been replaced by a newer bulletin. This is a great way to quickly identify the vulnerabilities on a hypervisor that have not yet been addressed. Let me show you the difference when I clear the checkbox. There are now many bulletins listed as missing. And while this shows that the hypervisor is woefully out of date, the good news is that bringing it up to date is easy. One option is for me to pick and choose only the bulletins that I've researched and tested and deploy only those bulletins to my hypervisor. On the other hand, if I re-enable the Only Show Latest checkbox, I can again see that all of the missing bulletins have been rolled up by the vendor into a single bulletin named Update 1. If I'm confident about this bulletin, I simply need to deploy this single bulletin to bring the hypervisor back into compliance. I can do this by selecting the missing bulletin and then clicking Deploy Selected Bulletins. The Bulletin Deployment dialog enables you to specify how the hypervisor and the virtual machines that are contained on the hypervisor will be affected during this time. If it is necessary to put the hypervisor into maintenance mode during the deployment, the hypervisor's virtual machines must be either shut down or moved to another host before the hypervisor can enter maintenance mode. If the vCenter server that is managing this hypervisor is configured to use Distributed Resource Scheduler, or DRS, you will have the option to allow DRS to migrate the virtual machines to a different hypervisor before beginning the deployment process. If DRS is not available, as is the case here, or if DRS fails to migrate one or more virtual machines, you can specify if the virtual machines should be suspended or shut down, or if the deployment should just be canceled if any of the hypervisor's virtual machines are still powered on. For this demonstration, I'll deploy the bulletin using the default options. As highlighted here, the operations monitor will display each step in the deployment process. With the deployment now complete, I can click this link to view the detailed results of the deployment. This link takes me to Event History. Event History provides a way to view a number of different background operational events that occur within Shavuot Protect. In this case, it is displaying our most recent hypervisor deployment. If I select the hypervisor deployment item, I'll be able to review all the steps that occurred during the deployment. Let's now go back to the hypervisor and see how its status has changed. The program is now showing that all of the latest security bulletins are now deployed to the selected hypervisor. If I clear the Only Show Latest checkbox, the bulletin I deployed, as well as all the other bulletins that were rolled into it, will reappear. The current status of all the available bulletins is now listed as installed. This is of course true for the Update 1 bulletin that I just deployed. For more information about Shavlik Protect, go to the web URL shown here. 
These two web pages contain additional video tutorials as well as a large number of Shavlik Protect user guides. Thanks for watching.